அண்ணா சார் குட் ஈவினிங் சார் குட் ஈவினிங் சார் good evening friends we warmly welcome to the yet another uh, post graduate clinics i thank uh, professor sudesh shinde and professor satyanam from uh, banaras university professor sudesh shinde is head of the department at uh, bhartiya vidyapeet pune thank you sir for joining this evening i also warmly welcome uh, our senior faculty here professor kanna sir professor rajiv sakai sir and others who are going to join us shortly so we have two candidates uh, both of them have had little short notice for this week so uh, dr anand kanan is from shri ramchandra medical college kindly contributed by professor cd narayanan sir head of the department of the shri ramchandra medical college dr shabit is from uh, uh, saracha pd is from uh, apollo institute of medical sciences hyderabad kindly contributed by professor shridhar head of the department of surgery we wish both the candidates a good luck and uh, we request uh, anand kanan to go first uh, anand you please introduce your unit chief and your head of the department and then start your presentation good luck to you all the best faculty please take over thank you sir uh, good evening everyone sir i am uh, dr m anand kanan uh, from sri ramchandra institute of medical sciences uh, my hod head of department is dr uh, professor cd narayanan and my unit chief is professor dr arlappan uh, sir i will go over with my presentation I'll share your slides ah uh, okay sir They are able to see your slides, Dr. Anand. Please go ahead. Okay, sir. So, good evening, everyone. Um, a 50, 58-year-old female from Thirugir Kadu, a homemaker by occupation, came with uh, chief complaints of abdominal pain for two weeks. Uh, she uh, has a present illness and patient was apparently normal before two weeks, after which she had epigastric and hypochondrial pain a uh, pain which is of pricking type continuous no aggravating fact, uh, factors uh, really don't taking pain medication uh, no radiation of pain no relation of pain to food intake um
history of back pain present, dull aching, intermittent, uh, no aggravating factors, uh, relieved on taking medications. Patient was admitted in an outside hospital one week, one week back for the same and patient was referred to SRMC for further management. History of epigastric fullness present. History of vomiting present, uh, three episodes, one week back. Contains food particles, non-bilious, uh, non resistant par partially digested food particles. History of decreased appetite present, uh, no history of significant loss of weight, uh, no history of early satiety, no history of ball rolling moments, uh, no history of bloating distance and food intake, no history of uh, history of yellowish discretion of sclera present, history of high colored urine present, history of pale stools present, history of pruritus present, so no history of melina and no history of fever. No history of uh, dysuria, no history of recurrent blood transfusions, uh, no history of tattooing, uh, no history of generalized weakness, no history of breathlessness, uh, no history of bony pain, and no history of similar episodes before. Past history, no known comorbidities, surgical history, history of thyroid surgery done 25 years back. Uh, patient, uh, patient has no documentation for that and uh, details is not known for, by the patient. History of open sterilization done 30 years back. Menstrual history, menopause attained 15 years before. Menarche attained at 14 years. No history of uh, dysmenorrhea and weight discharge. Obstetric score P6L2, A3 and uh, D1. Personal history, mixed diet, normal bowel and bladder habits, normal sleep and appetite decreased. Family history, nil significant. So, uh, summary, a 58-year-old female with complaints of abdominal pain for two weeks has history of vomiting, epigastric fullness, loss of appetite and jaundice symptoms with past surgeries of open sterilization and perithyroid surgery. You are Dr. Karnan. Sorry. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us uh, what are you dealing with in a summary by history? Sir, uh, she's got pain. And yes, and uh, jaundice. Now, is yes. this jaundice surgical jaundice? Sir, yes, sir. Uh, uh, mostly a surgical jaundice, sir. Why do you think it's surgical jaundice? Sir, uh, obstructive type of jaundice, sir. So, no. Why do you think it's obstructive jaundice? Let's go back to your first slide, second slide. Sir, high color urine present, sir. Suggest of uh, uh, increased so, urine. Color urine will make it obstructive jaundice. Uh, yes, sir. So, what about what about uh, viral jaundice, viral hepatitis? Is this uh, urine high color or, or not? Uh, yes, sir. But then uh, pale stools are also present in addition to pruritus. What is do? In addition to pruritus and pale stools are present, sir. So, yeah, exactly. So, patient has pruritus. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, pale sir. stools is, is very difficult to, to judge. Uh, they... And, also, in obstructive jaundice, only only thirty or forty percent of the patients give history of pale stool. Yes, sir. With pruritus and progressively increasing jaundice. Yes, sir. Progressively. Is the jaundice in increasing progressively? Yes, sir. Increasing progressively, sir. How no do you know? Similar, no history of similar episodes before, sir. Uh, gradually progressive uh, increase in jaundice, sir. No, so by history, how do you say? How did what? What did she say that tell you that that made you think that is progressive? Uh, sir, initially she had a. Uh, uh, discoloration of scler sclera alone. Uh, later, she found it in her hands also, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, let's go back to your set of, uh, first slide, please. Now, she's got pain. What do you mean by pricking type of pain? You think there's a needle, needle going there? Sir, the way patient describes, uh, it was like a, a, prick, a pricking type of pain, sir. Like... No, what is pricking type of pain? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, uh, like a needle prick kind of pain, sir. Okay. So what do you think is the cause of pain here? Uh, the patient uh, might be describing the pr pricking type, sir, but... Uh, yeah. no, what do you think is the cause of pain? In obstructive jaundice with pain? Yes, sir. What, what comes to your mind? Sir, if... Uh, Pancreatic head is involved uh, involvement of celiac axis. So the pain, that pain is very, very severe. Okay, get 
a pricking kind of pain visceral okay okay get us the cho- the causes of painful obstructive jaundice sir uh, uh, ca head of pancreas okay what else mm. sir uh, late uh, towards the later stage you could uh, get pain in uh, cholangio carcinoma okay anything else no can you get pain when there if there stones in the in the cystic duct polydocolitis 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 you could get pain sir but uh, with the swelling we... no no i'm not talking about the uh, what ah. i asked you a simple question painful yes, obstructive jaundice yes, right polydocolitis okay, okay. polydocosia okay now history of epigastric fullness yes, so uh, if you what are what are what is the differentials after your history sir mostly pertaining to uh, obstructive jaundice uh, obstructive jaundice uh-huh. uh huh might might be involvement of biliary tree or uh, pancreatic head uh, kind of things uh, periampillary ca but uh, okay it can it can't be a Yes, sir. Uh, can be a hepatic cause. I can be a hepatic hepatic cause, sir. But uh, so why are you ruling that out? So with the she has history of vomiting three episodes one week back. Yes, sir. Why do you think? And it contains food particles, non bilious, non blood cell. Why do you think she has had a vomiting? So, uh, she might have some extensive compression, sir. Extensive compression of what? uh stomach sir uh, like from in the cardia or in the cardia oh, stomach no, in, the... in the in the antrum uh, towards the lower part of stomach in the antrum so and can, can uh, 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 a tumor of the head of pancreas cause vomiting yes sir so when you are thinking of obstructive jaundice why are you thinking of some extensive compression at the antrum causing vomiting the most probable cause is uh, head of pancreas Okay, can there be any other cause of vomiting? Does or jaundice produce nausea? Yes, sir. So it could be just that jaundice. Uh, the it's just a just three episodes, isn't it? Yes, sir. For a week, and she's been having this for abdominal pain for two weeks, and yes, she's been having this fullness for how long? One. So it's all everything has been in, in within a week or two weeks. Yes, two weeks, sir. Yes, sir. So before two weeks, two weeks she was absolutely okay. Yeah, she didn't notice anything in her sir. Uh, uh, like first she noticed her, uh, uh, she had pain, diffuse pain in her abdomen in epigastric and hypo, uh, right, right hypogondrium sir initially. Okay. Okay. Uh, then, uh, then like others noted uh, her uh, her sclera, like yellow discoloration of her sclera. Hmm. She identified her uh, like uh, different. Everything so has happened in two weeks. Ah yes sir, everything within two weeks. Sir. Next slide please. Sir. Next slide please. and do you get the painless jaund painful jaundice in carcinoma head of pancreas is oh. that a yeah, yes sir like in you get the painful jaundice in case of carcinoma head of pancreas sir in advanced cases it might lead to no no we are not talking about advanced cases you know the typical presentation of a carcinoma head of pancreas is painless progressive jaundice oh okay. that typical presentation of that you know okay sir pain comes very later jo hai na okay sir okay so it is not the cause for the painful jaundice jo hai okay sir okay the painful jaundice is either because the stones may be there or some inflammatory pathology is there or the late cases of neoplasm is there and then you can keep the painful one jo hai okay yes, and you said the epigastrium and the right hypochondrium the patient is telling you yes sir sir uh... Chief complaints is like patient has abdominal pain only, sir. You know what is right hypochondrium? Ah yes, sir. What is right hypochondrium? Uh, sir, uh, we'll divide abdomen into nine quadrants, sir. Yes. Trans- trans- so how trans- big is how big is the right hypochondrium? Sir, uh, very small, sir. Yeah. So it's very small. So it will be much better to say that the patient complains of pain in the right upper abdomen. Okay, sir. Now then, specifically saying epigastrium and the 
Okay, sir. Right hypochondrium. Okay. See, uh -huh. in the right upper abdomen, the patient had the pain. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. What is the significance of back pain here? Sir, uh, she, uh, back pain she had occasionally only, sir, not uh, continuous as that of abdominal pain. But in a, in a patient who has got the jaundice? Pancreas, involvement of uh, panc pancreas. Sir. Yes. Why, why there will be back pain? Uh, sir, uh, involvement of Sir, pancreas is, uh, location of pancreas is in retrobetonian space. Yes, so? So why there will be pain? Sir, uh, involvement of celiac axis. So celiac ganglion may be, na, that may be getting involved there. Neural involvement may be there. So, or there may posterior penetration may be there. All those can cause the back pain. And what is the sig clinical significance of the back pain? A patient having a carcinoma of the head of the pancreas presents with a back pain. Can you think Sorry. that what can be offered to that patient? Sir, uh, uh, we could uh, limit the... It almost become a non-resectable growth. Oh, yes, sir. Limited. Okay. Once the patient has carcinoma head of the pancreas is there with the back pain is there, almost for all practical purposes, this is not a resectable growth. Okay, sir. So you have to only go for the palliation for that patient and not a curative approach. Okay. okay? Yes, right. Dr. Shah, you can carry on, please. Right. <clears throat> So, how do you take history of uh, pale colored stools? The patient typically said, said that she had uh, white stools uh, uh, before okay. she used to have normal colored stools and now she had some white. Uh, so, there was no, no, uh, there's no waxing and waning. No, sir, no, no waxing and waning, sir. Like uh, she had never, she had never had an episode like this before, sir. This okay. Was, uh, history of pruritus. Can you elaborate on that? Uh, what sir, is it? She had increased increased itching all over the body, sir. Uh, mostly uh, uh, scratch marks have been seen on the by uh, both upper, upper limbs. You could see scratch marks. Um, it's due to deposit deposition of bile pigments in the derm dermal layer. No, I didn't ask you that. Where do you think the scratch marks are usually seen, sir? In the peripheries. Periphery means in the palm. Uh, so in the extremities, like uh, upper limb. Is generally the torso. Okay, sir. Torso. Next slide, please. Why take history of fever? Sir, in case uh, cholangitis is present. Um... Okay. Any any other reason for fever? Mm. Any inflammatory conditions, sir, of pancreas? No, there is any fever because of, of malignancy. Uh, yes, sir. Why? Uh, sir, sorry, sir. Can there be any fever due to malignancy? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, neoplastic, uh, neoplastic fever, sir. What's that? Uh, like a, a part of para, para, paraneoplastic syndrome, you'll get a is it paranoia or is it tumor necrosis? Tumor necrosis. Right. Okay. Next slide, please. History of dysuria. Why do you take that? Sir, if there is any any difficulty in a, like painful mixturation, we should take uh, kidneys into account. Like, to rule out kidneys. So you have a history of jaundice and you have fullness and in the epigastrium yes, and you have all factors which is pointing towards the towards organs other than the kidney still you've taken history for this year why not have a then uh, yes, why sir. not have a why do you take just history of this year this uh, year of uh, like present uh, like my next question would be curious. excuse me if the surya is present, I would have asked the uh, next question is hematuria. Okay, so suppose, then why did you ask, start off with 
I'm a chiller straight away. Look, uh, uh, doctor, if it's got any significance with your with your no, sir. case, I mean, you could have asked for headache, you could have asked for difficulty in, in walking. Yes, sir. Right? There, there's no end to questions. So if this question is going to help you in some way, I, I would agree with it. Right? Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay. All this thing about bony pain, breathlessness, just take it as no history of meds. Oh, okay, sir. Okay, so there, because they're numerous, then could, there could be metastasis to the brain, and then you, you've not taken that. Okay, okay. Sir. okay sir. So, if similar episodes before, why do you take this? What do you mean by that? Uh, waxing and waning is present or not? Uh, like, no, yeah. waxing and waning and similar episodes before are different. Sir, uh, if uh, if she had a similar uh, similar episode of jaundice, in some mm -hmm. time. Uh, she might have recorded the uh, vaccine episode against them. I mean, does what did you want to achieve by asking this question? Similar episodes before, sir. Uh, in two conditions, it can occur, sir. Cholecystitis and uh, periampullary CA. So just to rule out that. Uh... No, in, in periampullary carcinoma, you can get similar episodes before. Yes, sir. Uh, like vaccine and winning can be. No, waxing and winnings is different, uh, but getting similar episodes of jaundice and pain and epigastric fullness, this yes. is what you mean, na? Yes, sir. Okay, next slide, please. Next slide, please. Oh, sir. No history of one, history of thyroid surgery 24 years back, okay, menopause, okay. Family history, what did you ask in family history? What do you want to know? Sir, uh... If they had similar swellings in their uh, families before, uh, how like many, how many, uh, how many brothers and sisters does she have? Uh, sir, uh, she, she had only two, uh, two live child, sir. No, no, what? brothers and sisters. Uh, two sisters, sir. Two sisters, all alive. Ah, uh, yes, sir. Mother. Uh, ma mother is out. Uh, mother okay. is like, passed away. Sir. Next, next slide, please. Okay, so you think it's a. Something to do, some malignancy to do with the pancreas. Oh, yes, sir. Resulting in obstructive jaundice, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, should, so, should we continue with the examination, sir? Anand, okay. why the yes. urine is yellow? What is the reason of yellow urine? The expression of uh, uh, conjugate. Uh, bilirubin, like uh, while it can't come out, it will uh, go in a retrograde pathway to in, into the urine. Sir. What is a colonic jaundice? Uh, sir, uh, in hemolytic conditions like hereditary spherocytosis, you could see a colonic uh, jaundice, sir. Uh, Why there is a colonic jaundice? Sir, uh, 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 reason, uh, reason for that? Sir, unconjugated bilirubin can be excreted by via the kidney, sir. Okay. Good. Right. Now, if a patient has got the blood transfusion, at what point he can develop the jaundice? Sir, um, sir if he asks, uh, yeah, based on uh, which info, is it hepatitis B or hepatitis C, which kind of information he has, he develops, sir? No. What are the various points? or time intervals when a patient can have a jaundice after the blood transfusion? When it can be the earliest one? Earliest uh, two weeks. Sir. Okay, uh, Dr. Kanan, if you do a transfusion, yes, sir. can you get jaundice after 24 hours? Y yes, sir. Of course, yes, you sir. can. So why are you saying after two weeks? Sir, uh, sir? So why are you saying after two weeks? Sir, in case of uh, non-obstructive... Uh, um, the question was, the question was, if you, after blood transfusion, when can you get jaundice? Sir, sir we can get in uh, 24 hours, sir. So, yeah. okay, yeah. I'll just yeah. ask you one question. Okay, sir. Okay, the patient is uh, of obstructive jaundice, isn't it? Yes, sir. The stool is pale, pale, pale colored. Yes, sir. So why is the urine dark now? 
There's no intrahepatic circulation. Yes, sir. So why is the urine dark? Sir, uh, due to obstruction, uh, uh, bilirubin formed like uh, the conjugated bilirubin goes in a, a retrograde pathway into the bloodstream. Right. So it is it is conjugated. Very good. It's conjugated bilirubin. And so if you test the urine for uh, bilirubin, bilirubin, you'll get positive and that shows it's obstructive choice. Yes, sir. Right. Okay, so either the patient may have the hemolysis is there <laughs> immediately after. So there's a mismatch blood transfusion is there. So within 24 to 48 hours, you will get the jaundice. Or it will be after about four weeks to six weeks. If it is infective pathology, the viral pathology is there. HBS is positive. And in that case, you will get that. Okay, Why did you ask history of tattooing in this patient? What was the reason for asking history of tattooing? Sir, uh, hepatitis B... Okay, for the transmission of the hepatitis B. Okay. Did you ask the history of night blindness in your patient? No, sir. Can it happen in a patient with a jaundice? Um, night blindness? Um, yes, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Why it will happen? And what is the chance of having the night blindness in an obstructive jaundice patient? Sir, uh, inability to absorb uh, fat-soluble vitamins. So the vitamin A is not getting absorbed. Uh, yes, so the patient can have the night blindness. And in about 10% of the patients, if you ask the history, you will get the history of the night blindness in the obstructive jaundice patient. Yes, sir. Okay. What is the difference between a waxing waning and the intermittent jaundice? Uh, sir, in a three to four months interval, uh, if we get an episode of jaundice, Um, what is waxing waning and what is intermittent? Sir, for waxing and waning, there is no, no specific time interval, sir. Waxing waning, do not touch the baseline, okay? Okay, sir. It will never touch the baseline. But intermittent variety, it may touch. Okay, sir. Like a patient having the cholidopolythiasis, you may get the intermittent jaundice. But in the case of periemporary carcinoma, you will never have the intermittent jaundice, but you can have the it's vaccine mean. jaundice. Okay, okay, sir. I think, Dr. Shai, we can go on the examination. Sure, sir. Definitely, sir. Yeah, please. Uh, general examination, patient is conscious and oriented, performance status, ECOG score 2. Uh, vitals, uh, BP 130 mercury and uh, pulse rate 88 uh, beats per minute. Uh, saturation, 99% at room air. Uh, no pallor, actress present. Uh, no cyanosis, no clubbing and uh, generalized, no generalized infernopathy. Uh, so this is a clinical picture of my patient uh, showing uh, actress and uh, yellowish discoloration of palms. Sir. Uh, no pedal edema. Scratch marks pre present on by both upper limbs, sir. Uh, no signs of uh, liver failure present. Systemic examination. Uh, inspection abdominis abdominis protuberant, umbilicus and midline uh, and inverted. Uh, fullness noted on epigastrium. Moves with uh, respiration. Cellulation scar present. No sinuses and dilated veins. No visible nodules around the umbilicus. No visible peristalsis. Uh, flanks are free, bilateral hernial size free, uh, left uh, supraclavicular fossa is free. Palpation, uh, no local raising temperature, Tend tenderness present on epigastrium, right hypochondrium and uh, umbilical regions. A firm mass of size 15 cross 10 cm felt on uh, epigastrium and right hypochondrium. Uh, shape is globular uh, uh, with smooth surface and uh, regular borders. Inferior border is palpable, uh, superior border is not palpable. Uh, extends 10 cm below the surface sternum in the midline up till 4 cm above the umbilicus, 8 cm uh, towards right side from the midline and 4 cm towards the left side from the midline. Uh, cannot insinate fingers uh, beneath the right costal margin. Uh, uh, beneath the left costal margin can be insinated. Epitomagaly, uh, plus liver palpable at midclavicular line and continuous with the mass. <coughs> uh, swelling most with respiration. 
head raising test mass becomes uh, less prominent uh, non pulsatile hernial sites are free no renal angle tenderness no palpable nodes on uh, left uh, supraclavicular fossa percussion dullness noted over the entire extent of swelling uh, liver span 18 cm uh, percussion mid clavicular line continuous uh, con continuous with the dullness of swelling no shifting dullness no fluid thrill auscultation bowel sounds present uh, succussion splash negatives other system examination cvs uh, sns to present and no added sounds rs bilateral identity present cns no focal neurology to present a summary a 58 year old female with complaints of abdominal pain for two weeks history of vomiting epigastric fullness and loss of appetite and jaundice symptoms was found to have a firm mass of size 15 cross 10 cm involving right hypochondrium epigastrium and umbilical regions continuous with most of the respiration with hepatomegaly okay so yeah so what is your diagnosis now sir uh, let's uh, go to your summary final summary sir let's go to your final summary uh, this one sir. same sir yeah okay so the it's uh, pain vomiting epigastric fullness jaundice mass in right hypochondria sir may, um, mostly towards the epigastric and, epigastric. Epigastric and umbilical region continues to the liver moves yes, with respiration with hepatomegaly okay yes. so what do you think it is now uh, pancreatic ca with uh, like advanced uh, I have a pancreatic at CA with the uh, liver meds. Okay. So why do you think it's pancreatic? Sir, with the uh, back pain and uh, uh, obstructive jaundice pattern, CA head of pancreas uh, like cannot be ruled out. Like... No, no, no. Let's cannot be ruled out. So many things cannot be ruled out. Hepatocellular calcasoma cannot be ruled out. Yes, sir. <clears throat> why do you think it's moving with respiration, the lung? Yes, Yes, sir. So pancreatic tumor, tumors move with respiration. No, sir. Uh, so the palpable one is probably a metastatic uh, metastatic mass, sir. Okay, let's go back to examination. No regional examination complete. Have you got a, a picture of the abdomen? Uh, sir, uh, actually, uh, there is no picture of abdomen, sir. Okay, it's okay. It's okay. No, no local rise in temperature. Where do you take the temperature? And why did you do that? Sir, to rule out inflammatory mass uh, swelling, sir. Like, rectal all swellings. Just to... So, where? Inflammatory mass where? Sir, on the swelling, sir. No local rise in temperature on the swelling, sir. On so, the... you think, you think, suppose it was a gallbladder tumor. Okay, sir. The, the, the temperature would be raised. Or it was a pancreatic tumor and the temperature would be raised. Or sir, it was an abscess. Suppose it was a... Uh, liver abscess, the temperature would be raised. Sir, not with generalized, uh, uh, locally around the swelling, I'm saying, uh, about the lo no, 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 no. examination, in examination, do you find any change in color on the, on the abdominal skin? No, sir. On the general examination, was the patient febrile? No, sir. Then why do you take local, no local rise in temperature? Sir, just to rule out the inflammatory swellings. No, what, how can you rule out inflammatory, what inflammation are you ruling out? Sir, uh, like parietal wall swellings. No, so do you think there is a parietal wall swelling? No, no sir. No, sir. Look, uh, Dr. Khan, you're going to be a surgeon. Okay, sir. Don't, don't get, come up with this MBBS stuff. So, okay, sir. It doesn't matter. It doesn't help. Do you ever do local rise of temperature on a lump abdom abdomen? No, sir. You don't. So don't do Tell us what you do. What no. you're doing in your in your clinics is the right thing. Okay, sir. Don't don't try to add things to that. Okay. okay Tenderness sir. is present in epigastrium, right? Okay. Why is this lump tremble tender? The lump is tender or is just the whole area is tender? So the whole area is tender only, sir. Like uh, epigastrium, hypogastrium, and uh, right hypochondrial and uh, umbilical region, sir. Why do you think it's tender? Uh, uh, 
involvement of visceral peritoneum dr kanan this is one i can try to tell you <clears throat> look you may be eliciting something yes, tenderness is a very subjective thing right yes, you must while presenting see whether this, this helps you to come to your diagnosis or not okay sir these are red herrings okay sir they throw you off the track okay sir right so okay, we sir. don't want you to po be posting red herrings like rise of temperature and tenderness if it doesn't help unless unless you think there's a stone there in the is this lump is your gallbladder or not there's so an epigastrium and right hypochondria do you think it could be a gallbladder sir uh, no sir why sir the mass is more towards the globular smooth surface regular this thing everything is just look like a gallbladder to me yes sir like but uh, clinically the mass is more in the epigastrium sir predominantly on the epigastrium and extending slightly to the hypogastric region sir look i mean don't be so uh, so rigid about about can it oh, be a gallbladder sir. might can be, be a, yes sir yes sir right it can be a gallbladder the shape the surf the the whole yes, shape is saying it's a gallbladder yes sir yes sir extend 10 cm below the surface of midline portion above right okay okay cannot insert your finger okay that's fine hepatomegaly what's what's the uh, uh, okay next slide please moves with respiration yes sir so why are you stuck with ca head of pancreas can can uh, ca called better present with uh, with obstructive jaundice sir uh, can present sir but uh, uh, towards a, uh, like in the towards a later stage sir. so how do you know this not a later stage how do you think this is a ca called pancreas in an early stage uh, no sir in advanced stage only sir not what do you mean normal stage Is it no, advanced, ad, ad, advanced stage only, sir. CA. This is a, this is advanced CA head of pancreas. If you think, yes, sir. Right. So why can't it be advanced CA uh, gallbladder? <coughs> sir, it could be, sir. But uh, sir, uh, clinically findings are more toward like epigastrium, sir. That's why. If 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 the the gallbladder has have a has a lump towards the fundus or uh, towards the body. Okay, sir. It can. Okay, sir. Okay. Do you think this 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 uh, lump is intraperitoneal or retroperitoneal? Sir, intraperitoneal, sir. Why? Sir, uh, most of the respiration. Oh, okay, very good. So that rules out your CA head of pancreas. Sir, uh, sir, uh, see the secondary sin. Liver might. Uh... So, so you think it's a head of pancreas with secondaries in the liver? Oh, yes, sir. So how do secondaries in the liver present? Do they present as a globular mass uh, hanging from the from the liver? No, sir. Sir. Uh, then I'm, I'm not specific to a particular diagnosis, sir. But then uh, it might be uh, uh, a separate thing. Look, look, Doctor Kanan. We are, you have to come to. You can't be. Uh, you probably you know the diagnosis. I'm not saying that. But let's 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 start afresh. You got to take everything with a pinch of salt. Okay, sir. You can't come come to a diagnosis here that see a head of pancreas in two weeks, advanced stage, with secondaries in the liver, with a with a with a sec one secondary hanging like a like a gallbladder from the lower end of the lower margin of the liver. Yes, sir. Okay. Next slide, please. any okay liver span is 18 cm midline continuous sir okay if there is no shifting dullness why did it do fluid thrill sir if uh, shifting dullness is present fluid thrill won't be present sir if fluid thrill is present uh, shifting dullness won't be present just to uh, no no i mean i can't understand if there's no shifting dullness why should you do fluid thrill and if there is fluid thrill Why should you do shifting dullness? Yes, sir. No, yes, sir means what? Sir, uh, in in case of increased uh, peritoneal collection, uh, peritoneal fluid, sir, uh, peritonitis, uh, there might be. Your, look, your abdomen is not very distended, like you said. Yes, sir. It is a protuberant. Yes, There's a difference between protuberant abdomen and a distended abdomen. Yes, sir. Right. 
So if there's no distension of abdomen, then you can do just shifting dullness. You don't have to do fluid thrill. You do fluid thrill only when there's a distended abdomen. Okay, sir. Right? Okay, sir. So look, you don't get marks of putting everything. Okay, sir. If you put excess stuff, your marks start getting deducted because this tells us that you don't know the difference between shifting dullness and fluid thrill. Okay, sir. Mm. Right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Next slide. <clears throat> okay, why did you use suckers to splash? Sir, uh, since patient had one episode, like three episodes of vomiting, just to... So all patients are vomiting, you do succussion splash? No, sir. Like, no, not relevant, sir, actually. Then? Should not have done, sir. Okay, so how did you do succussion splash? Let me tell me. Sir, uh, half a liter of water, uh, uh, I asked patient to take half a liter of water, sir. Mm -hmm. And um, then? The, with my stethoscope, a bell of stethoscope on uh, epigastrium. Immediately after that? No, sir. Like, if, sir. It, if you take a half of uh, uh, half a liter of water on your uh, yourself, and I I put a, I shake you, I will get the splashing sound. Fifteen to twenty minutes later, sir. Huh? How much? Fifteen to twenty minutes. Three to twenty. Fifteen to twenty. Yes, sir. Okay. What is the gastric emptying time of for water? Sir, immediately it'll empty, sir. Okay. 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 So what, what? Suppose it was positive. What would that have told you, sir? Uh, pyloranthric growth. No. Suppose there's a periampullary carcinoma and the patient has succussion splash. Ah, uh, sir. Uh, uh, sir, diurnal adenocarcinoma around the ampulla factor, like a uh, part of uh, periampullary. Diurnal carcinomas will present with succussion splash. Sir, uh, like oral scene. If the tumor has extended into the stomach, stomach, distal end of the stomach, right? You get it. Okay. Next, next slide, please. Okay. Did you examine the back? Ah, yes, sir. Uh, renal angle. No, renal... the spine. The spine. The spine. Sir, spinal tenderness was like uh, I uh, look for spinal tenderness, sir. No, so you've very written. You've not written anywhere. Anand, did you examine the neck of the patient? Have you examined the neck of the patient? Yes, sir. Left uh, supraclavicular fossa I examined, sir. No, 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 no. Neck means left supraclavicular is not neck. Your patient has well, undergone well, the well, thyroidectomy. Well, huh? uh, yes, sir. So you have not examined the neck of the patient? Sir, you noted the scar, sir. Hmm? Otherwise, sir, sir uh, per se, neck examination I didn't do, sir, but I noted the scar, sir. So you have not told anything about that, you know? Okay. That the patient has undergone. Only in the history you are telling, but in the examination you are not telling anything about that. Okay, sir. Okay. How did you measure the liver span in this patient in the metaclavicular line? Sir, uh, from the second intercostal space, I keep percussing, sir. Like, uh, from... In, in, your, in your patient, yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, there is a big gallbladder lump is there. Okay. I suspect it's a gallbladder lump. Okay. There is a globular lump in a jaundice patient. Okay, and sir. It may be slightly on the medial side. But I still think it is a gallbladder lump, you know? Yes, sir. Okay. So, if there is a gallbladder lump which is there in that area, yes, sir. how did you measure the liver span in the mid clavicular line? And you have said that it is continuous with your liver, with the that lump. Yes, liver sir. That continuous. So, you cannot measure that in the mid clavicular line. Sir, uh... On palpation itself, we could feel uh, like uh, we can't uh, insulate the finger center itself. So, hepatomegaly is present for sure, sir. And then okay. you can see that this lump which is there on palpation is continuous with the liver dullness. Y yes, sir. And this lump is in the mid clavicular line. Yes, sir. Right. So, yes, sir. if you have to measure the liver span, that's the uh, you cannot do that. So, you have to go to some other site. Either you go to the anterior axillary line or you go to the mid axillary line like that, and then only you can tell the liver span about that, but not in the mid line, mid clavicular line. Yes, 
what is the pulse rate of your patient? Sir, 88, sir. Okay. What can happen in a patient with a jaundice to the pulse rate? Sir, brady, my patient might go for uh, brady. Okay. Can there be tachycardia? Sir, if accompanied by fever, might lead to tachy, sir. But, uh... So, the cholangitis is there, there will be tachycardia. So, why there is bradycardia? Uh, the reason for bradycardia in a patient. Uh, while pigments in SA node. Where? In SA node, sir. Hmm? Deposition of bile pigments in SA node, sir. SA node or AV node. Burkinja fibers. Irritation of the vagus nerve. Vagotonic effect is there. Myocardial depression factor is there. So there are many reasons for the relative bradycardia in a patient with obstructive jaundice. Okay, sir. Okay. Now, you said the succussion splash you will do after having a glass of water, which you will never do. Okay. Okay, what Dr. Sai was telling, if you have taken the food and you immediately do that, it will be in your also, Jay. So, that is the prerequisite for that. That the patient must be at least empty stomach for 2 to 3 hours. Okay, sir. Before you demonstrate the succession splash. Yes, if the sir. patient has taken even the liquids within an hour or so, you will not demonstrate that. Okay, sir. So, it has to be in the empty stomach. Okay, sir. Now, tell what are the causes of jaundice in a patient with carcinoma gallbladder? How the carcinoma gallbladder can cause the jaundice? Sir, uh, yeah. sir, you can compress the CBD, sir. Okay. L uh, lymph nodes, sir. Uh, positive lymph nodes, cystic lymph node of land. No, lymph nodes where? In the porta hepatitis region, sir. At the porta hepatitis. Good. So that is the commonest cause. What are the other causes of jaundice in carcinoma gallbladder? Once you, once you said it is the porta hepatitis, lymph nodes are there, compression of the CVD is there, there can be a direct invasion of the bile duct may be there if there is a growth at the neck of the gallbladder. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, there can be multiple liver metastasis, multiple liver metastasis involving both lobes of the liver. Okay, sir. Okay. If there is a single metastasis which can cause the jaundice, can you tell which place it can be? The... A single metastasis is there, but it is causing the jaundice. It is in the caudate lobe. Okay, it is the segment one which is there. If there is a solitary metastasis is there, it can cause the jaundice. And then there can in about 10% of the patients, there can be CBD stone may be there. Yes, sir. 10%. Okay. okay, normally in CA gallbladder, in how many cases you get the gallstones? Approximately? 10% uh, you told. Gallstone, gallstones, not, not the CBD stones. In about 60-70% cases, so in a good number of the cases, you get the gallstones. Jay. Okay. And in 10% cases, you can get the CBD stone, which may be the cause for the jaundice in a patient with the carcinoma gallbladder. Okay. So there, these are the various reasons why there can be jaundice in carcinoma gallbladder. Okay. So what is your provisional diagnosis now? Carcinoma, gallbladder, sir, biliary cystic tumors also. Might so, happen. if you think it is a carcinoma, gallbladder is there, from which place it is of the gallbladder? What is the consistency of the lump? Sir, firm, sir. It is tense type lump or it is a hard nodular type of the lump? Sir, tense, tense lump, sir. So, if there is a tense lump is there, can you get it in the carcinoma gallbladder, tense lump? Uh, uh, 
Yes. Yes, sir. You can. Okay, there can be mucosal of the gallbladder because of because of obstruction carcinoma involving the neck of the gallbladder or the cystic duct area. Okay, sir. And it can lead to a mucosal formation there. And then in that case, you can get a tense lump. Yes, Similarly, you can get in the case of carcinoma head of the pancreas also. Yes, okay. So, will you bet over the carcinoma head of pancreas or will you bet over the carcinoma of the gallbladder? Carcinoma head of pancreas. So, I will also put my toss over the carcinoma head of the pancreas here. Okay. Yeah, because uh, that gall lump is the gallbladder lump, tense gallbladder lump is there, there is a back pain is there. Yes. So I will put my coin over the carcinoma head of the pancreas. Okay, so keeping these two possibilities in mind, how you are going to investigate? Sir, uh, basic routine investigations, LFT. No, that that is not going to give you the diagnosis. Uh, and sir, the first thing you are going to do in this patient is? Sir, no. Ultrasound. Yeah, you do ultrasound of the abdomen. So, what you will get in a case of carcinoma head of pancreas and what you will get in a case of carcinoma gallbladder? Um, sir, a thick wall distended GB with the. Um, sir, now tell the findings on ultrasound. You know, whenever you have to describe the findings of ultrasound in obstructive jaundice patient, you have to start right from the liver. What yes, will sir. happen in the liver? Hepatomegaly, sir. Hepatomegaly may be there, but what do you want to describe on the ultrasound? Sir, uh, uh, what, what the radiologist will say? That there is intrahepatic biliary dilatation. Yeah, biliary ductal dilatation is there. And that will differentiate whether you are dealing with a case of hepatocellular jaundice or your obstructive jaundice. Okay, in the case of hepatocellular jaundice, you will not get this finding. But in the obstructive jaundice, you will get this finding. Okay. Then you go over the bile duct. What yes. are you going to describe about the bile duct in case of carcinoma head of pancreas and case of carcinoma gallbladder? Diameter. Hmm? Diameter, sir. Dilated. Uh, okay. Diameter of six. Okay. So, so up to what level it will be dilated in case of carcinoma head of pancreas and in case of carcinoma gallbladder? Sir, in carcinoma gallbladder, uh... Until uh... usually the bile duct will not be dilated in case of uh -huh. carcinoma gallbladder because the commonest cause for that is metastasis at the porta hepatis. Uh -huh. So extra hepatic bile duct will not be dilated in case of carcinoma gallbladder. But uh -huh. if you get dilated bile duct up to the lower end, you know, that is typically called as that dilated bile duct up to the lower end. That is a typical of that there is some ampullary problem is there. Yes, sir. See, which may be because of carcinoma head of pancreas. Right. What is double duct sign? What is double duct sign? Sir, uh, CA head of uh, pancreas. Yes. Uh, causing dilation of uh, pancreatic duct and uh, hepatic duct. And See, the bile duct. Both bile duct as well as the pancreatic duct. What is the normal diameter of the bile duct and what is the normal diameter of pancreatic duct? Sir, by uh, CBD, uh, bile duct, sir, uh, up to six is normal, sir. Okay. Uh, greater than pancreatic duct? Up to two to four is normal, sir. Yeah, okay, agreed. Eh, not? Around three millimeters. Uh, yes, sir. Okay, 6 millimeter the bile duct and the 3 millimeter the pancreatic duct. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you get the double duct sign, it is a feature of the carcinoma head of pancreas. Mm -hmm. It will not there in the case of the 
cars from the gore bladder. Okay, then you look at the lumen of the gore bladder. What you will see? In case of carcinoma head of pancreas, in case of carcinoma gall better. Sir, uh, lumen dilated in carcinoma head of pancreas, sir. In both cases, it will be dilated. Right? No, in both cases, it can be dilated. But what are the things you are going to see? Sir, uh, pericholecystic uh, collection and uh, reaction. No. Outstanding. Usually there is no inflammation as such, you know, not the pericholecystic collection. Yeah. No. Okay, you can see the stones. I told you 60 70 percent. You yes. get the stone, Poly and you can see the irregular mass in the gall bladder, yes, which you will not see in the case of carcinoma head of pancreas. Carcinoma head of the pancreas will be a just a distended gall bladder yes, full of the mucus or the bile, whatever it is. Yeah. Yes, okay. Yes, what else you are going to see in the ultrasound? You have to see for the lymph nodes. The uh, porta hepatitis lymph nodes, size of lymph nodes in porta hepatitis. And other lymph nodes also. Oh, yes, sir. You have to see for the ascites. Yes, sir. Okay, so all these things you can make almost the full diagnosis yes, only on the ultrasound. Yes, sir. That is the first investigation you are going to do. Yes, sir. Okay. Then what next after the ultrasound? Sir, we'll uh, proceed with the uh, CCT whole of Okay. Why you want to do the CCT? The sir, reason for CCT? Um, sir, uh, to look out for uh, extent of mass, uh, like exactly where it is in relation to other uh, vital organs. In the CCT, always it's just like a TNM classification which is there. Okay. So you have to look for the tumor and its extent. You have to see for the lymph nodes and its extent. And you have to see for the metastasis in the abdomen. Yes, sir. Okay, that all you can see on the CCT scan. Yes, and you can, based on that, you can decide that is it a operable tumor or not. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So you have to look for involved in the blood vessels which is there. Okay, you have to see for any ascites, you have to see for any omental deposits which are there or the peritoneal deposits are there. So all these things will make the tumor inoperative. Yes, sir. Okay. You have done the CCT, what else you want to do? Sir, uh, um, MRCP. Hmm? Uh, MRCP, sir. Which CT? M MRCP, sir. Yeah, MR MR MRCP, sir. MRCP, okay. Why you want to do MRCP? Sir, uh, to rule out the 10% chance of cholidocolithiasis that could occur with gallbladder. For the You want to see really for the bile duct, right? Yes, sir. And then you may do the MRCP for these patients to see for the bile duct that there is no other pathology is there, right? The patient does not have a colloidal Yes, sir. Okay, I get for that. Okay. Then? Sir, uh... If you are suspecting a carcinoma head of pancreas, Sir, uh, like how many tumor markers? Endoscopic ultrasound. Okay, endoscopic ultrasound, yes. A tumor markers next to it. Which tumor marker you would do for carcinoma head of pancreas? CA99 first, sir. CA99, okay. Which other tumor marker can be done? CA, sir. Hmm? CA, sir. CA can be done, okay. Right. Can you do a definition here? Sir, no, sir. Why? Sir, uh, might lead to fistula formation. Fistula formation? Where? Fistula from where? Pancreatic fistula? Yes. If uh, mass is from pancreas, like, it might lead to fistula formation. Otherwise, in uh, in certain tumors, you can uh, do a image-guided biopsy, sir. So you won't forget a fistula formation then? 
So, okay. You. Okay. When what are indications for doing a FNAC in pancreatic tumors? Sir, in when you can't operate on the patient, you have to go for any alternatives. Palliative. Palliative, right? Also, certain cysts, pancreatic cysts can be malignant. Cystic, yes, right? No, cystic neoplasm, sir. Yeah, so you have to, what, so what kind of, uh, what is the advantage of doing an endoscopic ultrasound? You can take a biopsy. Also, yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. Okay. Sir, please, sir. Professor Khanna. Okay. So you have done that. And you find on the CT scan that there's a has it been done in this patient? Yes, sir. Okay, just show that, yeah. Show that, yeah. Tell about that. Uh, sir, a hypo echoic uh, mass lesion, sir, involving. No, just go back, please. Where did you see the where, could you just go back? Yes, sir. Move the slide slowly. That CT scan. Okay, shows the report. You got the CT report? No, yes, sir. But uh, it's not in the slides that I can do. Okay, tell us the finding of CT scan. Sir, uh, relatively uh, large, relatively well defined unilocular cystic lesion with thin hairline internal septations measuring 15 cross 12.8 cross 12.5 centimeter. Volume. Uh, thousand... where, where, where is the cyst? Uh, sir, in the biliary cystic lymphoma, sir, diagnosis, like they have mentioned. So it's in the liver. Uh, so, uh, yes, sir. In um, in the bile, in the bile duct, sir. It's in the bile duct. Such a large cyst in the bile duct. Just, just show it to us. You put the film also the wrong way. Yeah, just hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Yeah. So you think. This is large bile duct, yeah. It is not in the bile duct, eh, no? it is not in the extra hepatic bile duct. No, sir. It is in the intrahepatic, sir. Intrahepatic, eh, no? ah. Okay. So what is the differential diagnosis of that? Cystic lesion in the sir uh, biliary. Intrapancreatic mucinous neoplasms and biliary cystic neoplasms. Is normal, yeah. the pancreas, you say, according to the CT scan, is normal. Is yes, it? Sir. Yes, sir. So you have to tell only about the cystic lesion of the liver. Yes, sir. Hmm. So tell what are the various cystic lesions which can occur in the liver. Sir, uh, hydrated sister. Yes. Sir, uh, other swellings, uh, amoebic and pyogenic liver abscess can occur, sir. In... Okay. Hemangiomas can occur, sir. Yes. Uh, sir, polycystic liver disease. Yes. Uh, sir, uh, biliary cysts, sir. Biliary? Biliary cysts, sir. Uh, very rare, sir, but then colidocal cyst can occur. Polyleucocyst, okay, intrahepatic sometimes. All right. Okay. So, how do you make a diagnosis of biliary cyst adenoma on CT scan? Sir, they have mentioned a query biliary cyst adenoma, sir, but. No, but they must have thought something, no? How did you give that diagnosis? Mm -hmm. Sir, uh, Sir, uh, sister is multilocular, sir. Have you read about the biliary cyst adenoma? Sir, yes, sir, but uh, like limited things are only mentioned, sir. 
yes sir but not extensively sir not extensive okay so if it is a biliary cyst adenoma is there what is the plan of treatment sir hepatectomy with the or inoculation which segments are getting involved what are the various segments of the liver sir one uh, uh, predominantly left lobe of liver with uh, uh, 8 and 5 sir how many segments are there in the liver sir eight segments sir okay so how many on the left side how many on the right side sir uh, surgically we can divide liver into left and right sir like uh, 4a 4b uh, and 2 uh, 3 sir the or, or on the left side sir 2 Five, 3 six. are on the left side 4 4a 4 yes. 4a 4b 5 6 uh, 5 6 7 8 are on the right side sir anatomically sir yeah what is the difference between anatomical segments and the surgical segments sir uh, if we divide with uh, cantilever line and uh, portal vein then uh, uh, that is surgically sir uh, with falciform ligament uh, we can divide uh, anatomically sir what is where is the cantilever line sir in the from the gb fossa to ibc line planting from the uh, medial uh, border of ibc to gb fossa yes not the portal vein na Ah, sir. Is the IVC to the GB fossa? Yes, sir. Okay. So, according to the CT, in which segment this is getting involved? Sir, four uh, A, four B, two yes. three, uh, five and eight, sir. Right. So, what is the planning? What can be done? Sir, enucleation can be done, sir. What is the chance of recurrence after the enucleation? The recurrence is present. They have mentioned, <coughs> but they haven't mentioned uh, how many percent and recurrence is uh, like has been recorded. The, uh, they have mentioned, sir. If you go for the only the enucleation of that or cystectomy only that, you know, it doesn't suffice. Okay, Ideally, you have to go for the hepatectomy. But in this patient, whole of the left side has to go. Segment five has to go. Probably segment six has to go. Yes, sir. Okay. So, it's a big hepatectomy probably. That is why it is very difficult to carry out in this patient. Yes, sir. What do you understand? What are the various types of hepatectomies? Sir. What is right hepatectomy? What is left? What is extended? Sir, 4A, 4B, 2 and 3 are uh, right. Uh, that is left hepatectomy, sir. Right hepatectomy is 5, 6, 7, 8. Uh, extended right hepatectomy is 4A, 4B, 5, 6, 7, 8, sir. You don't remove the 7, 8? Uh, sir, 5, 6, 7, 8, sir. 4, 4A, 4B, 5, 6, 7, 8 is extended uh, right hepatectomy, sir. No, no, right. <laughs> In the right, you do not remove the 7, 8? We will remove, sir. You have to remove that, eh? Right? Yes, sir. 5, 6, 7, 8 has to be removed in the right hepatectomy. Yes, sir. 5, 6, 7, 8 for right hepatectomy. And uh, in addition to that, we will take 4A and 4B for extended right hepatectomy. Sir. Right. Dr. Bharti, you want to ask any question? Uh, in the beginning, in this case, uh, you are said that the, the liver is the smooth on surface. There is the, not a sign of the malignancy. Because the, in the case of the malignancy, the liver is the nodular, nodular in the appearance. Yes, Since the big the findings suggestive of the more in toward the gallbladder cancers yes. or the cystic lesion. Yes. Okay, as, uh, your CT scans said this uh, this benign this is this is just because of the cystoadenoma, cystoadenoma of the systems. Yes, sir. In your findings also, there are the no such findings is suggestive of metastatic liver disease. Yes, sir. And the point against also there is the tenderness. Tenderness is the not a feature of malignancy deposits. Malignant deposits. Yes, sir. 
ओके गुड डिस्कशंस डॉक्टर साहब शुड वी कंटिन्यू और वी स्टॉप नो नो आई थिंक आई थिंक वी डन थैंक यू सो मच सर थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच सर थैंक यू सो मच सर डॉक्टर कैन आई गो कैन वी गो टू द सेकंड पेशेंट यस सर यस सर यस सर uh back for the discussion for the next case also yes, dr sharad please share your ppt yes sir can i go to the first slide ma yes sir make it full screen Yeah, you are good to go, ma. Please introduce yourself. Your unit chief, head of the department, and start your presentation. Yes, sir. Um, good evening, everyone. Today I'm presenting a case of I'm Dr. Sarachandra Sabudi from uh, Apollo Institute of Medical Sciences, Hyderabad. Uh, my guide is Dr. L. Sridhar Sir, who is the professor and HOD in the Department of General Surgery, and our professor, Dr. Fayez Hussain Sir. Uh, Coming to the case, uh, this is a case of a 50-year-old lady who is a laborer hailing from Balaji Nagar, Hyderabad. Came to the OPD with the chief complaints of swelling in front and lower part of the neck for four years. The patient was apparently asymptomatic four years ago. To start with, she noticed a swelling in front of the neck and in the lower part four years ago, which was in serious in onset and approximately two centimeters in size when noticed and gradually progressed to the present size of approximately. 5 cm with no associated complaints of pain or no sudden increase in size there are no other swellings in the neck no symptoms suggestive of hyper or hypothyroidism um, no associated pressure symptoms no symptoms suggestive of distant metastasis past history patient is a known case of diabetes mellitus for 4 months and is on oral hypoglycemic agents and she is not a known case of hypertension or uh, coronary artery disease or cva tb asthma or epilepsy no history of irradiation she underwent tubectomy 25 years ago family history there is no history of thyroid swellings or cancer related deaths in the family in personal history the patient takes mixed diet has adequate sleep bowel and bladder habits are regular not an alcoholic or smoker there is no history of excess intake of goitrogens uh Summarized with the history of a 50-year-old lady who is a known diabetic for four months has come with a painless progressive swelling in front and lower part of the neck for four years, without hypo or hyperthyroid symptoms, pressure symptoms, or symptoms suggestive of distant metastasis. Okay. Uh, so, diabetic since four months, progressive. swelling in front of the neck for 4 years basically you thyroid yes sir. okay so what do you think it is what could be a differential pertaining to the location of the um, mass i consider it to be a thyroid swelling sir okay so thyroid swelling and then what what to what uh, what is the differential about this now and uh, it is a, a long duration with no recent change in the behavior of the mass i consider it to be a benign uh, thyroid okay so what benign condition can you think of just a swelling lower part of the neck for four years you thyroid what is the commonest endemic uh, Huh? Endemic goiter. You think it's an endemic goiter? What do you mean by endem endemic goiter? What do you mean by endemic goiter? When do you uh, call a goiter endemic? Or why do you call this goiter endemic? Any reason for it? What is endemicity? More than ten percent of the population from the place has a same condition. Right. So how do you know that she's coming from a from a place where there's more than ten percent of the population affected by this thing? 
can you give me a come up with a simpler answer is you can't just label anyone as endemic can you come up with a simpler answer what is the commonest swelling in the thyroid you thyroid patient with a swelling in the thyroid physiological right huh physiological you think she is physiological okay what is physiological right this Uh, it is usually seen in the pregnancy growth puberty pregnancy, puberty and pregnancy so 54 50 year lady pregnant lady so no then i forget your name what's the name please sarath chandra sir sarath sarath yes come up with a more more logical answer please colloid goiter yes sir right yes sir then it can be an adenoma or it can be a multi nodule goiter with a dominant nodule nodule okay so these are common ones commonest is a colloid goiter or a thyroid yes. cyst isn't it yes okay now let's go to your first let's go to your first slide okay yes. next so it's it's a small what's the normal size of a thyroid it's 3 to 4 cm in ah. so right a normal thyroid is generally not visible yes sir it's not visible so it has to become almost double to become visible right yes sir. so it's a, it's a 4 cm in the when no associated pain Why do you take a history of pain and sudden increase in size? Uh, in cases of uh, uh, hemorrhage in the gland, uh, due to the sudden increase in the size, there is stretching of the capsule and there can be pain. Okay, so when pain. when when will there be sudden increase in size? You said four years, two centimeters. Why have you taken this history of sudden increase? A force a. I mean, a five centimeter gland. Will it have a sudden increase? A uh, uh, two centimeter to five sudden increase? It says four years. Why do you take that history? Just for completion, you think there was hemorrhage there? Any okay. Reason? What? Not not required. Sudden increase not here. Not if it is four years and it's a small swelling. It is. It is. It is meaningless to ask whether there has been sudden increase. When she when we already said that it's been increasing from two centimeters gradually till four centimeters, or five yes. centimeters, right? So it's meaningless. It doesn't. Yes. It's just redundancy, right? No history of complaints of pain. Why pain? Suppose it was painful. Then what would you think of? Four years down the line, it becomes painful. So acute thyroiditis. So she can have have you can still have thyroiditis even if you have a thyroid goiter. There's a cyst, thyroid cyst. You can still have that. Okay. Yes. Next slide, please. Okay. I think the swelling is more than five. So okay, could be. Yeah. No other swellings in the neck. Let me just go back, please. Yeah. Next. Next slide, please. Yes. Okay. What? What? features or symptoms of what are the most important symptoms of hyperthyroidism and hypothyroidism most important there is increased sweating with uh, heat intolerance sir right with low uh, loss of weight and, in spite of good appetite very good, very good. so these are very important and what about hypothyroidism there is dry skin and cold intolerance right with uh, weight gain in spite uh, in spite of decreased appetite right okay very good so uh, appetite weight and tolerance uh, tolerance and tolerance to temperature right. <clears throat> pressure symptoms what pressure symptoms did you ask for sir in uh, asked for any change in voice or uh, difficulty in, uh, uh, in the, uh, breathing or a difficulty in swallowing Okay. Do you think a, a swelling in a, a five centimeter swelling 
will cause difficulty in swallowing? Uh, no, sir. Right? Why? The esophagus is behind. Cartilage. Yeah, it's behind the trachea. Yes. Sitting by the trachea. So, okay. What about uh, breathing difficulty? Why do you think the patient would have diff diff breathing difficulty in the case of thyroid? Mm -hmm. uh, in, in general, if the swelling is large, there might be the development of tracheomalacia, which... Uh, okay. Uh, okay. What about change in voice? Change in voice can be uh, due to... Of, due to Pressure on the recurrent laryngeal now, and uh, do you do you, uh, does any benign thyroid swelling, large swellings, cause change in voice? So, what is the change in voice due to in a thyroid swelling? Infiltration of the RLN. Right, it's infiltration, not pressure. Yes. Okay. Yeah, next slide, please. Okay. No known case of thyroid. Just say comorbidities. Don't say okay. past. Right? Comorbidity. Yes. History of irradiation. Why, why did you ask for that? Uh, irradiation in the neck region predisposes to development of malignancy. What what malignancy does it predispose to? Oh. Papillary carcinoma of thyroid. Right. After how many years? <coughs> okay, about fifteen to twenty years. Right. Next, next slide, please. No history of thyroid swellings or cancer-related deaths in the family. Okay. 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 Next slide, please. Excessive intake of goitrogen. Which goitrogen did you ask for? Uh, the most common available here are cabbage, sir. Okay, so how how does cabbage cause the goiter? Mm -hmm. What is that which contains there in the cabbage which causes goiter? It prevents the conversion of T4, peripheral conversion of T4. Oh, fine. What does it contain? What do cabbage or brassica family contain? They contain, they contain thiocyanates. I guess, yes. Right, right. Okay, next slide. Sir, please, I'm done. Okay, let's go to your examination then. There are yes. no questions. Uh, on examination, I examined the patient in a well lit room. After uh, with adequate exposure after taking an informed consent in the presence of a female chaperone. The patient is conscious, coherent, cooperative and comfortably sitting. She is well hydrated, well built and nourished. ECOG score is 1. In vitals, her pulse rate is 84 beats per minute. Uh, respiratory rate is 17 cycles per minute. Blood pressure is 110 by 85 millimeters of mercury and uh, saturations are 99% on room rate. She is febrile with a and her uh, BMI is 22.4 kg per meter square. Uh, there are no signs of pallor, ricterus, cyanosis, clubbing, pyelonychia, generalized lymphadenopathy. Sir, or sir, sir. Don't, don't invite us, don't put palpation of the skull, please. Yes, sir, I'll change it. <clears throat> and eye sign should be there in your in your regional examination. No. On inspection, on regional examination. Vitals means yes. vitals. Yeah. Go on. Yeah, go on, we've seen that. On examination of the head and neck, the patient is examined in sitting position from in front and behind as and when needed. On inspection, a solitary ovoid swelling of size 4 by 3 centimeters in the thyroid region extending horizontally from anterior border of the left sternocleidomastoid to the midline and vertically from 1 centimeter below the thyroid prominence to the 1 centimeter above the sternal notch appears smooth surface, normal skin over the swelling and surroundings. No angosted veins or visible pulsations. 
swelling moves with deglutition and doesn't move with protrusion of the tongue the lower border of the swelling is visible the trial sign is negative and no other swellings are noted in the neck on palpation there is no localize of temperature or tenderness over the swelling all inspectory findings are confirmed as not with uh, nodular ovoid swelling of size 4 by 3 cm in the thyroid region extending anteriorly uh, horizontally from the anterior border of left sternocleidomastoid to the midline and vertically from 1 cm below the thyroid prominence to 1 cm above the sternal notch and multiple small nodules were felt over the uh, thyroid normal skin over the swelling and surroundings firm in consistency and uh, it's mobile side to side and has limited vertical mobility it is not fixed to the underlying structures or overlying skin the rest of the thyroid gland is not palpable trachea is in midline bilateral carotid pulse is palpable in its normal position there is no cervical lymphadenopathy on percussion there is no sign of sternal extension on auscultation there is no bruit heard over the swelling systemic examination uh, on cardiovascular examination s1 and s2 are heard there are no murmurs respiratory examination normal vesicular breath sounds heard with no added sounds abdominal examination soft a non tender uh, abdomen with no organomegaly or lumps palpable see uh, uh, nervous system examination no focal neurological deficits are noted the uh, examination of the skull is normal and there are no thyroid eye signs uh, noted in this patient on summarize A 50-year-old lady who is a known diabetic for four months came with painless progressive swelling over the thyroid region for four years without hypo or hyperthyroid symptoms, pressure symptoms, or symptoms as to of distant metastasis. On examination, a nodular ovoid swelling of four by three centimeters present in the thyroid region on the left side, moving with deglutition and not on protrusion of the tongue, and there is no evidence of retrosternal extension. Okay, Doctor Sarath. First of all, you have not taken drug history of the patient. Is the patient on any medication for thyroid diabetes? Yes, she is on oral hypoglycemic agent. Shouldn't you mention that? Shouldn't that be mentioned? Yes. Okay. Okay. Let's go back to your. Let's go to your. Okay. No, no, no. Hang on, hang on. Let's come to your end of your examination. Okay. So, except for lump, she's got nothing. And it's a probably a, a thyroid swelling, which is four into three centimeters. Yes, sir. right. You have to, in your in your summary, you said there are other lumps also palpable, aren't they? No other lumps palpable. No, so this is just a solitary lump. Yes, sir. So what do you think it is now? Uh, I think it's a. Uh... Uh, multinodular goiter, sir, with the uh, clinical thyroid patient. Why, why, why do you think it's multinodular? You, you've got not felt any other lump. Well, Rajiv, can we go on Is the there? examination part first? Yeah, yeah, before the diagnosis. Sir, did you say that ECOG two is there? ECOG one, sir. Your one or two, whatever. Why did you tell us about the ECOG in this patient? Um, Why did you tell us about the ECOG in this patient? <coughs> you get my point? Yes, sir. Hmm? ECOG only for the malignancies. Are you suspecting malignancy here? No, sir. No. Okay. In case if you have to give the performance status for these patients, you can take the Karnowski. You know? I will not mind with the Karnowski. But not the ECOG. ECOG is for the cancer. Okay. If you want to give the performance status, you must tell about Karnowski. That is also mainly for the malignancy, but it is also accepted for the other diseases. Yes, sir. Okay. In your vital examination, you very casually told us that P pulse rate is 84 per minute. Yes. In a patient with a thyroid, you have to be really telling us about the pulse in a great detail. Okay, in a thyroid so patient, you have, tell, yeah, you have to tell in great detail about the pulse rate, about the pulse examination. 
because you can have almost every abnormality which is there of the cardiac in the case of the thyroid. Okay. okay. So you have to be very clear that you are telling us whether it is a regular or irregular, 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 what is the type of the pulse, rhythm is there, what is the volume of the pulse is there. So all those things you have to tell in the pulse rate. So do not, just do not say that it is 84 per minute. Oh. Okay. And ideally you should take what is called as a resting pulse rate. Sleeping pulse. Okay. It should not be that the patient is running to you after coming to your OPD and then you are taking the pulse. Okay. It has to be the patient has to take the rest and then only you have to go for that. You know? Yes. And why did you percuss the sternum in this patient? Why? The reason for percussing the sternum in this patient because that is a sign is there that you have told us or is it of any relevance in this patient? Uh, in this patient, uh, as the lower border is clearly visible and palpable, the percussion would be negative, sir. Yes. So, there is no point in telling about that. No. Okay. If you are not able to see the lower border of the swelling, then it is okay. No, but otherwise, this swelling is just a solitary thyroid nodule is there and you say it is one centimeter above the suprasternal notch. So, there is no point in telling about that. No. Where did you auscultate in this patient? Uh, over the superior uh, margin of the thyroid swelling. Sir. Why, why superior margin? The brewery yeah. is usually heard at the superior uh, pedicle of the... But why? Why on the superior? Why not on the inferior? What is there on the superior pole of the thyroid? What are the vessels which are there on the superior pole of the thyroid? You tell us the vascular supply of the thyroid, arterial and the venous. Uh, superior and inferior thyroid arteries, sir. Where is superior thyroid artery and where is inferior thyroid artery? Oh. Superior thyroid artery is at the superior pole. Yes. Sir. Inferior thyroid artery is not at the inferior pole. Okay. Yes. It usually is between the upper two-third and the lower one-third one of the thyroid. Third. On the lateral side, the inferior thyroid artery. Yes. Okay. That is why you always auscultate over the superior, superior. pole. On the inferior pole, there is only inferior thyroid vein is there, but not yes. the artery. While the superior pole, both are there. Artery as well as the vein, both are there. Yes. Okay. Now, how did you tell us about whether the trachea is central, you said? What are the various ways to look for the trachea? Uh, there are uh, inspectory, palpatory and uh, auscultatory uh -huh. ways to... Okay. This, uh, and what is the, the trial sign you said? What is that? Trial sign is the prominence of the sternal head of the sternocleidomastoid when the trachea is divided, uh -huh. deviated to uh -huh. the ipsilateral sides. Okay. Now, in your patient, you have done the CNS examination. To Can you just go for the CNS where you have written? Yes. Sir. Go to that. CNS you have done for no focal neurological deficit. So, you are really interested in that? In a patient with a thyroid? In the CNS examination, what are the things you are really interested in a case of thyroid swelling? Uh about fine tremors and uh, proximal muscle weakness, sir. So that, all those things you are not told. You are not told anything about the reflexes. Yes, yes. Eh, whether tendon reflexes are brisk or whether it is yes, sluggish. You know? So these are the things you have to tell. So you have yes. to tell about the tremors, you have to tell about the tendon reflexes and you have to see for the proximal mus muscle weakness. Yes. Now, where do you get the PTB and mixedema? In which condition? Uh, hypothyroidism. Hmm? Hypo. Pretty bill mixedema. 
ग्रेव्स डिसीज तो ग्रेव इज हाइपर और हाइपो हाइपर हाइपर थायराइड सो इट्स नॉट इन द हाइपोथायराइड दोट इज कॉल्ड एज मिक्सीडीमा सो डू नॉट कंफ्यूज विद दैट सो इट इज इन द हाइपर थायराइड नॉट इन द हाइपोथायराइड यस सो इन द नेक व्हिच कैरोटिड यू हैव फेल्ट in the neck which carotid you have felt common carotid arteries okay where did you feel that at the superior margin of the thyroid cartilage and uh, um, anterior to the anterior border of the sternocleidomastoids at the superior margin of the thyroid cartilage against which vertebra you are feeling that or transverse process C6, you are feeling transverse process of c6 vertebra c6 you are feeling right can you feel the external carotid in the neck no sir external carotid you can feel and if you go high up you can feel the external carotid but can you feel the internal carotid in the neck not sir you cannot feel it na yes So if you have to feel the internal carotid, where you will feel? Where you will feel for the internal carotid? So you feel it in the tonsillar fossa. So in the oral carotid, you have to go over the tonsillar fossa to feel for the internal carotid. It cannot be felt in the neck. Yes. Okay. Right. Dr. Shah, you can carry on now, please. Are you there? Yeah, I'm there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, okay. So, uh, what's what next now? How do you manage this patient? Uh, I'll get a thyroid uh, function test along with TSH Why along with the uh, ultrasound. Why do you want to get a thyroid function test first? Uh, along with ultrasound, sir. If we go you directly for FNAC, you get an ultrasound done first, okay? Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, have you got the ultrasound report? Uh, no, sir. I've got no reports. Uh, okay. So, what do you think in ultrasound you'll find? What is the difference between a solitary thyroid nodule, a multi-nodular goiter, and a dominant nodule? solitary thyroid nodule is there is only a single nodule present sir in the dominant thyroid nodule is wherein there are multiple small uh, nodules with only one nodule uh, uh, developing into an active uh, nodule so can you technically make out if it is a solitary thyroid nodule or multi nodule goiter yes sir on uh, palpation we can in large cases we can see bosselated surface in multinodular goiter sir uh -huh. and in palpation we can uh, palpate the nodules over the thyroid cell and what about uh, solitary how do you know it's a solitary thyroid nodule it's not a, a impalpable multinodular goiter with a dominant nodule how do you know it's not a, a, a dominant nodule it could be a dominant okay, nodule look if only that nodule is palpable and now other portion of the thyroid is palpable right yes. then it is a solitary thyroid nodule but if a portion of, if the thyroid is palpable and one nodule is large other nodules cannot be felt just one nodule but the thyroid is palpable then it's definitely a multi nodule mm -hmm. okay so you've done that you've done your thyroid function test everything is normal You yes. done ultrasound and it shows it's a solitary thyroid nodule. Oh. Okay. Okay. Go for uh, FNAC, sir. No. Okay. I forgot to ask you one. You said on palpation the the lump is firm. Yes, sir. It's firm. So what is yes. a thyroid paradox? You have an idea? No, sir. I'll find out about that. 
Wrong. Oh, so I'll tell you. In thyroid, cystic swellings feel firm, and solid swellings feel soft. Right. No. So that's the thyroid paradox. Okay. So now suppose this is a solitary thyroid paradox. What What do you do? And you've done a thyroid function test, and you have three possibilities. Yes. Right? Or the patient is hyperthyroid, the patient is euthyroid, or the patient is hypothyroid. Okay. Hypo, let's let not let's keep I hypo out of it. Is hyperthyroid or, or euthyroid? Yes. yes. So now what next? Suppose it's hyperthyroid. The patient is hyperthyroid, then we go for uh, ultrasound followed by nuclear scan, sir. Why do you want to do a nuclear scan? Uh, if the nodule, if it, uh, is the nodule active, is it, is it a hot or cold nodule present? Right. So you want to know whether the nodule is active functioning or, or, or inactive or the rest of the thyroid is active or not. Yes. So you have to differentiate between the hyperactivity due to rest of the thyroid or due, due to, to the, the nodule. nodule. So if the nodule is, is cold, yes, then what, what are the possibilities? Uh, cold nodule has a chance of malignant for 10 to 20% of cases it is malignant. Sir. So 80 to 90%, what is it? It uh, comes out as uh, benign. Doctor, yeah. It don't, don't, don't give emphasis to the 10%. Yes. Right? Yes. Okay. So, what do you think is uh, 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 is the cause of a cold nodule in a hyperthyroid patient? Okay. In multinodular goiter, what is the portion? What is the uh, uh, which portion is act, uh, is active and which is inactive? The internodular tissue is active, sir, and the nodule is uh, in non. -bush. So internodular tissue can become hyperactive also with this. Okay. okay. Now your your diagnosis is multinodular goiter. Yes, sir. Okay. So why do you think this is a multinodular goiter? Uh, I'll attribute to the long-standing history of the patient, sir, with no lymph nodal uh, involvement. Or, uh, so first you prove that it's a goiter. So it's a swelling of the thyroid. thyroid that is, yes. Then you have to prove that it's multinodal. Yes. Right. So that you can do by ultrasound or if the on palpation, if the thyroid gland is palpable and one nodule is is overtly seen. Oh, yes. Clinically you thyroid. Okay. Yes. So what is what is the management now? You've done the ultrasound, the patient is euthyroid on TFTs. What do you do now? Uh, I'll go with FNAC, sir. Why do you want to go with an FNAC? To have a okay. tissue. No, why? Why do you want to go with an FNAC? Okay, tell me. Do you want to rule out malignancy? Yes, sir. Why do you want to rule out malignancy? Mm. Of course, you mm. like to do it because it's a, even a dominant one, it can still pick up. It can still have malignancy. Right? Malignancy. Right. So now what is the treatment? So this comes out as as follicular adenoma. Yes. Sir. Now what do you do? Uh, if it, it is a follicular neoplasm on uh, um, uh, FNAC, then we go for uh, Sir, what are the causes of thyroid, solitary thyroid nodule? 
what are the causes of solitary thyroid nodule? Yeah, tell us the most common causes. Simple ones. Colloid. The most common cause is a multinodal goiter. Okay. So it's a part of one nodule you are feeling, but you are not able to appreciate the rest of the thyroid. But if you do the investigation, you'll find there are small, small nodules which are there. Okay, that is the first cause. Second cause, it's a neoplasm is there, no? which can be benign or which can be malignant. Third, yes, it may be cyst. Cis, thyroid cyst. Fourth is some inflammatory pathology is there. Okay. Yes. So the role of FNAC, can you treat a thyroid, solitary thyroid nodule with the help of the FNAC? If it is a simple yes. cyst is there, okay, if it is a simple cyst is there, you just aspirate it. Aspiration of the it's almost it's almost cured until unless it is coming back again and again. How many times you can wait uh, before you go? You can aspirate it twice, surgery? sir. You can aspirate it thrice. If it recurs the third time, then we should go for surgery. At least three times you can aspirate. Still, it is coming up. Then you have to think yes. some active treatment for that. Yes. Okay. What is the quadruple assessment for the thyroid? You know, just like we have got the triple assessment for the breast, what is quadruple assessment for the thyroid? It uh, has physical examination, radiological uh, ultrasound, FNAC and uh, uh, thyroid profiles. Okay. So, first is the clinical examination. Second is the thyroid profile. Thyroid profile. Third is the ultrasound. Radiological investigation. Radiological. And fourth is the cyto or cytopathology for that. No? But some people they say that you can also add the genetic markers in that. Yes. Which is taken as a quadruple, but otherwise, this is the quadruple testing you do. Yes. Now, in this patient where you are clinically not suspecting the patient is having hypo or hyper, it is a U thyroid. Which thyroid function you will do? Or you will do the whole panel or the list? <laughs> free T3 and free T4. Uh... Free T3, 4 are the for the screening purpose? Like in this patient, we are absolutely not suspecting. Yes. That the patient is you, you thyroid. having either hypo or hyper. Hyper symptoms. So, which investigation, if you are given a choice, and patient says, I can afford only one investigation out of that, okay. which one you will do? TSH. Uh, yes, yeah, use the TSH. Okay, TSH is for the screening purpose. Though it is for TSH. the mass screening, it can be done. But if you cannot afford the whole profile, you will only do the TSH. Yes. Now, for the diagnosis, Patient says, I cannot afford so many tests. Mm. Tell me one investigation. TSH is for the screening. diagnosis. Hmm? Yes. TSH is used for screening. No, TSH you have done for the screening. Now for the diagnosis. Which one investigation you would like to do? Free T3, free T4, total T3, total T4. Out of these four, which one you are going to do? Free T3, sir. Free T4. Okay, you will do a free T4 if you have to carry out only just one. Jay, no? Out of these four, you will do a free T4. Jay. Now, in the era of doing a total thyroidectomy, which even for the benign condition we are doing, what is the role of nuclear scan? Hmm? 
Okay, it was okay when we were not doing that, knowing about whether it is a cold nodule or a hot nodule or warm nodule. <coughs> when we are doing the total thyroidectomy, or even for the benign conditions, what is the status of nuclear scan? Okay, nowadays, majority of the time, the nuclear scan is only after the post-operative total thyroidectomy for a malignant condition. Okay, where the patient is having a well-differentiated carcinoma is there and you want to see whether there is any residual tumor or not or residual thyroid is there or not, then you do the nuclear. So, this is now the most important indication of doing the nuclear scan in the patient with a thyroid swelling in this area. Okay. Right. Okay. So, in this patient, have you done the FNS? Any investigation done in this patient? Mm, they the answer, but I don't, have the, I don't have the reports right now, sir. But this patient has got a follicular neoplasm as a different, as her uh, FNAC report. FNAC it is follicular neoplasm. Follicular okay. neoplasm, sir. Right. So, it has come out to be follicular neoplasm and the size is 4 centimeter? Yes. Sir. How do you size? 4, four by 3 centimeters. 4 by 3. Okay. So, proceed with that now. Yeah. How you are going to manage a follicular neoplasm of 4 centimeter size presenting as a solitary thyroid nodule without any metastasis? Uh, I'll go for a hysterectomy first. Frozen section, sir. If it comes but out as before, before you plan for the surgery, are you going to do some other investigations? Okay, serum calcium, sir. Okay, you do a serum calcium, yes. What else? You do not want to do any other investigation. You are planning for the thyroid surgery? Uh, indirect laryngoscopy. Why it is called as indirect laryngoscopy? Why it is called as indirect laryngoscopy? Who does that usually? Uh, <laughs> the ENT. ENT specialist does that. So, why it is called indirect? We'll be seeing a negative, sorry, reflective image on the mirrors. Reflecting image, oh. how, how they see the reflecting image? Or the mirror out in the... Yeah. Have you seen that mirror? Yes, sir. Yeah. It's a tilted, like this mirror is there. Eh? Tilted yes, sir. Is there. Where it is put? Uh, or, where, where do they put that? Uh, we'll go above, just above the tongue and uh, to oropharynge, posterior pharyngeal. Near the uvula. uvula. Near the uvula it is put. And then you can see the indirectly the vocal cords. Yes. And that is what is called indirect laryngoscopy. But can you do a direct laryngoscopy? Yes, sir. nowadays video laryngoscopy also offers... Uh, Easy access and uh, better investigation and recording if needed. So, who does the direct laryngoscopy? Who does the direct laryngoscopy? Mm -hmm. ENT? No. ENT, if you have to do the direct laryngoscopy, what is that called as? They will do the fiber optic. Fiber optic. Okay. If they have to do the direct laryngoscopy, they will do by the fiber optic. Yes. But the anesthetist does the direct laryngoscopy. When he's going to put the tube, he will directly see the vocal cords. Okay. And so that is the direct laryngoscopy. Yes, sir. Okay. So that has to be done. Any other investigations to be done before you take up the patient with the thyroid surgery? Laryngoscopy, 
Like to do any X-rays? Yes, sir. Lateral neck X-ray. Why you take AP view and why you take lateral view of the neck? Lateral neck to see the status of the cervical vertebrae, sir. Are you interested to see for the cervical vertebrae there? Or what is the main purpose of doing the X-ray of the neck? Uh, tracheal uh, latency and the first. You have to see for the tracheal deviation and tracheal yes. compression. So in which you will see the deviation, in which you will see the compression. In which X-ray you will see the compression. And in which X you see the deviation? In AP view, we see the uh, deviation of the trachea, sir. In uh, lateral view, we see the compression of the trachea. So why you want to see that? The purpose of seeing the compression and the deviation. Why you want to see that? Uh, if the trachea is uh, deviated or if it's involved, the patient going into the tracheomalacia after uh, surgery is uh, high, sir. So, you know, it is both for the anesthetist point of view and from the surgeon's point surgeons of view. To counsel. So, from the surgeon's point of view, what is the importance of AP and lateral view? So, normally, a surgeon will think that the trachea is there in the midline. Yes. Okay. But it is debated to the left or the right side. So, there is all chance of damaging the Recurrent laryngeal nerve yes. and the trachea. Because he will be searching in the midline, but it is not there. And from the anesthetist point of view, when he is putting the tube, he has to make the curvature of the tube so that it can go in that. Yes. Okay. And in the lateral view, what is the significance to the anesthetist and to the surgeon? No. It's the compression of the trachea. Yes. So, what is the significance of that to the anesthetist and to the surgeon? Uh, to the surgeon, trachea Okay, to the anesthetist is that like normally he is putting the number seven endotracheal tube. <coughs> Because the trachea is compressed, so he has to choose a smaller, smaller size. size. Maybe six size or six and a half size. Yeah. And to the surgeon, because he is doing a total thyroidectomy and if it is already a compressed trachea is there. Tracheomalacia. After, yeah, there is a tracheomalacia and it will compress. It will collapse in front of you. Yes. Okay, so the patient may require the prolonged intubation. Or the patient may even require the tracheostomy. Okay, so the both the views are very important, AP view and the lateral view in all cases. Right. So you are planning in this patient, what is your plan? Keeping the follicular neoplasm? Uh, what are you going to do? Um, we went for hemithyroidectomy with the frozen section, sir. Okay. So, you are taking the patient for the hemithyroidectomy? Yes, sir. What is the position of the patient? Uh, rose position, sir. So what is rose position? Uh, patient in supine position with uh, extension of the neck. Mm -hmm. That is rose. How will you extend the neck? How do you say it? Um, just a sandbag or uh, under the shoulder, under the scapula, hyperextension yes, of the neck to cause the hyperextension. And anything else apart from that sandbag? Anything else to be done for making the neck extended? And shoulder roll. No, that you put a, no, you have put a sandbag underneath the blades of the scapula in that area. Yes. Sir. Anything over the skull? A drink to stabilize. So how will you stabilize? 
always <coughs> the head of the patient by Sorry, putting sir. something rounded you are going to put what is that called as donut have you heard the donut or not yes yeah so you put a donut underneath the occiput occiput top there okay so send bag over the scapular blades and, and the donut, donut under this occiput yes and third part what is the third part of the rose position something else has to be also done in the rose position is the patient completely supine or something else trend line of the patient uh, is up huh? uh, the reverse trend line work position is placed yes how much 15 degrees how much reverse trend line work and the reason for that air embolism will not be in going in if in cases of any chances of air embolism it will not go enter the heart directly Okay. Okay, so it is put around fifteen degrees. Okay, yes. around fifteen degrees. Head up is done to prevent the venous congestion of the face, you know, okay. and also in the rare circumstances of the air embolism, which can occur if you in case damage, like especially when you are doing the neck dissection. Okay, then you can in the thyroid it may not be there, but when you are doing the neck dissection, then in that can happen. Yes. Okay. Then, how do you identify the recurrent laryngeal nerve? Uh, it is uh, posterior medial to the. What is the relation of the recurrent laryngeal nerve to the inferior thyroid artery? Uh, Do you like it the inferior thyroid artery or not? Uh, we don't like it, it, sir. We go to the capsular branches and then uh, like it. Uh, so it runs in between the branches of that. Yes. Okay, it runs in. So usually it is running vertically, while branches are coming transversely. Okay. Yes. And you do not like it. Why you do not like it? Then initially we used to like it the inferior artery, but now we do not like it. And the reason for that. Uh, the parathyroid blood supply is being hampered when ligating the inferior thyroid artery. All, all the parathyroids are supplied by the inferior parathyroid, inferior thyroid. Inferior thyroid artery. Okay, so that is why you do not ligate the inferior thyroid artery. Yes. Okay. Dr. Rajesh Rai, Dr. Bharti, you want to ask? Any? I think it is okay, sir. Time, time is around ten. <laughs> we have time. <laughs> There's a lot of how you identify the midline during the surgery. Suppose there's a trachea is deviated, and how you identify the midline? No. To make the flap. Both superior and inferior flap subplatysmal. Then you identify the anterior jugular vein. It is a landmark for identifying the midline. Okay. It is deviated. Sometimes it is deviated, but you you must make the incision between the anterior jugular, anterior vein. jugular veins. How you identified the parathyroid gland during surgery? No. 
Um, <clears throat> brown uh, P size structures posterior to the thyroid gland, and uh, usually they flow, they sink when they are placed in the distal body. When it, it is immediately removed, then it can done the sinking test. What other structure can sink? And what other structure is fluid? If you are performing the sinking test. Usually the fat uh, globules taken are the uh, float, sir. And the lymph nodes are usually sink along with the... What is usually sink? Yes. But identification of the parathyroid gland is during the surgery is just the branch, capsular branch, and the, the nerve is just running in between. And second one is this by the color. Yes. And sometimes it is removed during the surgery, then you can do the this sinking test. Suppose the parathyroid gland is removed in the total thyroidectomy specimen. Yes. What is the next approach? <clears throat> uh, and you got five Sorry, sir, I missed the last. Suppose there the parathyroid gland is removed during surgery. Yes. Sir. How can you preserve the parathyroid functions? Uh, if it's identified intraoperatively, then we reimplant the thyroid uh, parathyroid tissue, sir. Where? If, it, if the patient is going for uh, therapy afterwards, we implant it in the brachioradialis, sir. Brachioradialis, yes. If it's uh, a benign condition which we have done the surgery for, then we implant it in the sternocleidomastoid. Yes. Okay. Thank you, sir. Professor Kanna, sir? I think, uh, uh, Satyanan, sir, thank you for joining this after evening. Uh, uh, Kanna, sir, do we have any comments or uh, can we call it close, sir? Okay, just I, I was asking one question from him. Please, sir, please, sir. Please when, do, when do you get the hypocalcemia? Yeah, that is more When important. do you get the hypocalcemia? Uh, with respect to the uh, post op POD to the patient presence with uh, no, 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 four to six hours, usually four after six. four to six hours, not four to six hours, it is not four to six hours, 24 hours, yeah, it's 24 to 48 hours, okay, 24 to 48 hours. 48 hours. And what is the first sign of the hypocalcemia? Perioral numbness. Numbness. Okay. Just yes. Yeah. Okay, Dr. Kanagal, we can stop now. If is there any other question? Dr. Kanagal? Yes, sir. I think we will call it a close. Uh, yes. I thank both the uh, Dr. Satyanan, sir. Thank you for joining at the last moment notice. And uh, Kanagal, sir, Kanna, sir, and uh, Rajin Sakai, sir, thank you for joining. And uh, sir, like Chapidi, do you have any doubts to be clarified? No, sir. Now feel free to ask any questions now that we have the national faculty here. No, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Rohit, sir, are you from Apollo Institute, sir? Sorry, we could not recognize you, sir. Yes, sir. I am associate professor, sir. He's our PG, sir. Thank you, sir. Would you like to add your comments anywhere you would like to tell? Uh, yes, sir. It was very nice clinical discussion. And I think he'll learn many of the points from it. Thank you, Khanna sir and Sai sir. Such a wonderful discussion. Thank you very much. Then, friends, we will call the session a close. And friends, I'm happy to share that uh, next week and subsequent week, we have the very popular session. Next week, uh, Khanna sir will be addressing to the instruments, surgical instruments. And subsequent weeks, Dr. Rajgopal Shanai sir will be touching upon the imaging. So mostly we will be having one short case and the talk by the respective senior faculty. And then the invitations will also be explaining this about it. And then after a couple of weeks, we get back to the normal two case report. This is the plan for the coming two weeks. Good luck to you. All the very best. With the permission of the faculty, I call the session a close. Good night, everyone. Yes.
Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.